how many alien civilizations do you think are out there? There's 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 like trillions of environments, mm-hmm. aka planets, uh, or maybe you can think even bigger than planets. How many lifelike organisms do you think are uh, out there thriving? And maybe how many do you think are long gone, but were once here? I think, well, innumerable. Uh, I think in so terms of the greater than zero, gr- much greater than zero. I mean, I would just be surprised. What a waste, right? Of all that space just for us, if we're never going to get there. Um, that would be my first uh, way to think about it. But second, I mean, th- I remember when I was about seven or eight years old, and I would love if any of your listeners could find this National Geographic. Uh, I remember opening uh, the page of the National Geographic. I was about, again, seven to 10 years old. And it was sort of a current picture of the universe. It was around probably 1968, 1969. And I just remember looking at it and thinking, what kinds of empires have risen and fallen across that space yeah. uh, that we'll never know about. And would, isn't that sad that we know nothing about something so grand? Uh, and so I've always been a reader of science fiction because I like the creative ideas of what people come up with. And I especially like science fiction writers that base it in good science, but base it also in evolution. That if you evolve a civilization from something lifelike, right, some sort of biology, its assumptions about the universe will come from the environment in which it grew up. So for instance, Larry Niven is a great writer, uh, and he imagines different kinds of civilizations. In some cases, what happens if what happens if intelligence evolved from a herd animal, right? Would you lead from behind, uh-huh. right? Would you be, uh, you know, in his case, one of them were the, the so-called puppeteers. And to them, the moral imperative is cowardice. You put other people forward to run the risk for you, right? And so he writes entire books around that premise. There's another guy, uh, Bryn, David Bryn, is his name, and he writes the uh, so-called um, Uplift Universe books. And in those, he takes different uh, intelligences, each from a different evolutionary background, and then he posits a civilization based around where and what they came from. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, to me, I mean, that's, that's just fun, but I mean, back to your original question, is how many are there? I think as 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 many stars as we can see. Now, how many are currently there? I don't know. I mean, that's the whole that's the whole question of you know how long can a, li- a civilization last before it runs out of steam? And you, for instance, does it just get bored, or does it transcend to something else, or does it say I've seen enough and I'm done? What does running out of steam look like? It could be destroy itself or get bored. You know, it said, or we've we've done everything we can and they just decide to stop. I don't know. I just don't know. It's the Elon Musk worry that we stop reproducing or we slow down the reproduction rate to where uh, the population can go to zero. Can go to zero and, and we can't, and we collapse. I mean, so the only way to get around that is uh, perhaps create enough machines with AI to take care of us. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? 